I'd like to start as usual by thanking the organizers for inviting me to this conference. Yeah, uh, my title is a mouthful. Uh, it's curvature function renormalization, topological phase transitions, and multicriticality. And uh, I, this is work actually in progress. And uh, I, the, we have a, it's not going to be a complete piece of work. So I'm going to just uh, give whatever ideas we have at the moment. And this is work done in collaboration with uh, Farooq Abdullah, who's here, who's my PhD student, and Priyanka Mohan, who was a former postdoc with me and who's currently a postdoc at TIFR. So uh, what are topological phases? This has been mentioned by many people, and I'll just be very brief. They're just characterized by quantized physical quantities, such as, for instance, there is the charge polarizations, which is defined by winding numbers. All conductance def defined by churn numbers, et cetera. And typically, topologically non-trivial phases have edge states. The bands touch each other at some points in the Brillouin zone, whereas trivial phases are gapped. And uh, the classification of phases has already been discussed in detail today itself by Tanmay. They're classified by symmetry, dimension, et cetera. And for non-interactive fermions in the presence of internal symmetry, a periodic table has been found. And there have been further extensions in the presence of crystalline symmetries, extension of K-theory classification, et cetera. What uh, we are interested in in this talk is more topological phase transitions. One can go between phases in different topological classes when a gap closes somewhere in the Brillouin zone, and when there is a change in the number of edge states. So the idea is to change parameters of the theory, and uh, for instance, the magnetic field and the quantum Hall effect, and then you have phase transitions between different phases, for instance, in the quantum Hall effect between different Chern numbers. So the idea is as, as parameters are tuned, the bulk gap actually closes and reopens going to a new phase. So our motivation here is to actually try to understand topological phase transition using ideas which are familiar from the Landau theory of phase transitions, even though there is no uh, order parameter. Because the point is that topological phase transitions here imply some discrete change in an integer topological invariant. It signals gap closing in the single particle, or it could also be in a many body spectrum. So our question is, can we classify, have a new system of this classifying even topological phase transitions by scaling behavior of appropriate correlation functions near the transition? So this work actually follows a whole set of papers by a group from KTH in Zurich, Switzerland. And uh, among the various authors, is, as you might see, Chitra, who was a student here at IISC with uh, Diptiman. And uh, I saw her name on the papers, and that's what motivated me to look at these papers, actually. <laughs> so that, that's what got me interested in this thing. And we started looking at what they're doing. So. Um, the basic idea is to first define an appropriate curve, something which they call a curvature function, which is the function in the space of Brillouin zone, and M, which is the set of all tuning parameters in the field, Hamiltonian. The integral over this function, the curvature function, is what gives you the topological invariant. So for example, uh, as you, as Deeptiman already mentioned today, these are, there are various examples of what are called topological invariants. In 1D, you have the winding number, which is given by the integral of a dk of the, of an appropriately de defined ak. In the 2D system, you have the, uh, or the quantum Hall system, which is broken time reversal. You have the churn numbers, which are again defined as, or as an integral over some function of the, in the momentum space. Similarly, for the time reversal invariant topological insulators, the essential point is that there is some function, which is a function of the momentum space, and also of parameters in the theory, which contains the information about the band structure, which has to be integrated over the whole Brillouin zone to get the 
topological invariant. The idea is that by looking at many of these uh, uh, models, what they saw is that close to phase transitions, as the parameters reach the, uh, some critical point, the curvature function actually diverges at the, at the gap closing point, K0. And that denotes a critical point where the topological invariant changes. So the tuning parameters can be the magnetic field, chemical potential, hopping parameters in any model, et cetera. But as the tuning parameters reach a particular point, there is a um, gap closing, uh, and you also tune this to the K0, you find that there is a topological change. So the idea, as they say, is of the of renormalization group approach in this case is to have a, some kind of a scaling procedure which renormalizes this curvature function, keeping the topological quantum number invariant. The analogy is like that if you, you have to integrate over this messy kind of a knot to get the uh, topological invariant, but if you can smooth out or stretch out this string, then you may be able to go to a place where the knots are invariant. So that is the kind of uh, scaling or renormalization that we're going to do. So let me see, uh, explicitly mention again. So the idea is that as m goes to this critical point, the curvature function develops a divergence at some high symmetry points where the gap closes. And then the curvature function actually you, uh, changes sign. We will consider the gap closing at non-high symmetry points later, but for right now, the gap closing, let's consider gap closing at high symmetry points. So this is something which is called the peak divergence scenario. The fu function gradually peaks as you reach in, in, the, in the parameter space, space as you go to, towards MC. The function as a function of K gradually peaks and then changes sign. So this is what happens in a 1D case. This is what happens in a 2D case. The function peaks and changes sign as you approach the critical point in the parameter space. The, and uh, f using this idea, we will now write down some flow equation. So the essential idea is that you change parameters. You are searching in the parameter space in such a way that you reduce the divergence. So you change the parameters, reduce the divergence, for instance, you, if there is a divergence at k is equal to 0, then you change your parameters from m to m prime. So this is your, you, and reduce the divergence. And then at this point, what you find is that the function is the same as the original function at a different k0 point, k0 plus delta k. And so this, then you take this point, then you repeat this procedure until the, the divergence is completely reduced and the thing becomes flat. So that is the renormalization group that we're thinking of. So as I already showed through the pictures, close to the topological phase transition, the limit as m goes to mc from the positive side is opposite of the limit as m goes to mc from the negative side, and it diverges. And what we call the fixed point of this theory is that you keep repeating this until the two become equal. That is, f of, at k0 plus delta k at some point m0 becomes the same at m, f of k0 at m0. That is something which we'll call the fixed point of the theory. The same equation uh, that I wrote down can also be written out as a differential equation in uh, renormalization, which is what we call the renormalization group equation in parameter space. And of this renormalization group equation, the critical point is where the derivative of m with respect to the dl, which is k, dk squared, goes to infinity. That is your critical point. And the fixed point is when it becomes 0. There is also uh, something which is called the ring divergence scenario, which is another way that the, the function can behave as you go close to the critical point. And that is actually if there is a, instead of uh, at the point, instead of diverging, it actually diverges as a ring around the point. And it's the ring, the maximum of the ring which changes sign. In 1D, this is the way it would look. There are two functions and the peaks 
change. And uh, it, it basically, it's uh, the extremum of the ring which changes sign across MC. And this turns out to be an unstable uh, fixed point of the uh, renormalization group equation. So essentially, the points where dm by dl either diverges or they, they are unstable fixed points, those are the points occurring to them that denote topological phase transitions in this model. So uh, now what I want to do is I'll try to uh, this. OK, there are a few more things which I will say about the formalism. Then I'll try to describe it in terms of a simple model which they have given. And then we will try to do it in our case where we explore a little more. You can also, uh, the curvature function uh, it typically has a Lorentzian form close to the point where it diverges. And so because of this, one can also define what are called uh, critical exponents. You can think of the how you can look at the way the uh, it, the divergence happens close to the critical point and call this uh, some exponent gamma. You can also find out how this critical uh, correlation length, because this is a momentum, this is an equivalent length, how this diverges and call it nu. And uh, in general, of course, uh, because the fact of the the, uh, the uh, topological invariant, which is the integral over uh, the curvature function, because this has to be an invariant, it's clear that uh, you automatically get a scaling law, gamma is equal to nu d, because this is proportional to fk k naught m over zeta to the d. So these two uh, exponents have to be related by gamma is equal to nu d, where d is the dimension of the system. And uh, can, yeah. What? Yeah. It has to change from. See, the, the, the churn, churn invariant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The churn number changes exactly at the point. That is correct. That is taken into account in this, this thing. Uh, yeah, uh, we can also, uh, in uh, normal phase transitions, this length scale zeta is also uh, associated with the correlation function. So here, one can also introduce a correlation function that decays with the correlation length zeta. And in terms of one-year states, what one, one technically defines is something which is the Fourier transform of this uh, curvature function. And what you can find out is that the Fourier transform of this correlation function is actually related to the uh, kind of overlap of one-year functions at a distance r apart. And this is again something which happens in all the models that they've considered. So it's like uh, if, uh, uh, so if you look at lambda zero, that is precisely the churn invariant because r, if I put r is equal to zero, then I get the churn invariant. On the other hand, it, lambda r is expected to, to be related to the correlation length. So close to the topological uh, phase transition, the one-year functions become extended and have overlaps over large regions. So the idea that why one wants to do this is that to obtain the renormalization group flow, we require knowledge of the curvature function only at a few points. Whereas, of course, to get the topological in, in, invariant, you need to integrate over the whole Brillouin zone. So you need to know the curvature function over the whole Brillouin zone. So if we can get the topological phase transitions from the renormalization group equations, it could be more efficient in some cases where you don't know, where you don't have full knowledge of the theory. But for right now, we are first going to do it. Uh, it's like benchmarking the method. So one is trying to do it uh, against cases where you already know the results. So uh, the simplest case where, in fact, this is again by the same group, Chen, uh, Y Chen, who was the first to start it. In his paper, they have said, the simplest model that he considered was the Su Schieffer Heger model, which is a well-known model in one dimension. And uh, this has basically two uh, topological phases. 
But uh, one can also write down using the procedure that uh, has been described, the uh, write down, the renormalization group equations for this the flow of this. Here the parameters are t and delta t. And if you scale out everything by t, there is only one free parameter, which is delta t. So the m that we have is just delta t. So I can write down the renormalization group equations for different values of k, for if k0 is equal to 0 and for k0 is equal to pi, because these are the two high symmetry points of the theory. And in the first case, uh, in the first renormalization group equation, what you can see is that uh, delta t is equal to 0. Here I am plotting delta t is equal to 0, denotes an unstable fixed point, which is also a critical point. And at, if you look at the equations at k0 equal to pi, delta t is equal to 0 means d delta t by dl is infinite. That also signifies a, a phase a, a critical point. So this is my the critical point of the theory. And delta t is equal to plus t and minus t are the fixed points. That's where the flow equations flow to. And so as we said, it's the, the critical points are where you would expect it to have a phase transition. So one would expect from the RG equations, the phase transition to occur at delta t is equal to 0. And of course, uh, the exact solution, you know that the gap closes in the Brillouin zone at k is equal to pi. And we know that uh, the delta, this point is a phase transition point, And it's the winding number is uh, 1 here and 0 here. In our case, uh, we can actually very simply calculate the winding number. Because if you put delta t equal to t, either this term or, or minus t, either this term or this term becomes 0. So it's actually very easy to compute the turn numbers at these two points. And uh, you can uh, uh, easy to check that the winding number at delta t is t is 0 and that delta t is minus t is 1. So you get exactly what you would expect in a very small, in this case, of course, the model itself is very simple. So you can solve it very simply. But even otherwise, using the renormalization group equations, you could get the answer extremely simply. And uh, they have done many other examples in 1D and 2D. Basically, they've mostly worked on quadratic models. They've worked on time-dependent quadratic models. So they've depended on Floki quadratic models. They have done one case where it's been done for an interacting theory with weak interactions. But there, they get exactly the same exponents as you get for the free theory. So it's still uh, being explored at the moment, is what I would say, whether it will be useful in other cases or not. So our work idea was to explore this idea for more complex models. And uh, our main results is that we get, actually, we do get fine, uh, unstable fixed points, critical points, where the gap closes at non-high symmetry points which is something they did not get in their models. And uh, we also find multi-critical points where three topological phases meet at a point. So we wanted to see how good their, this kind of system is for their case also. Find two different length scales. And I'll just briefly describe what we've got so far, which we haven't completely understood. So I mean, I can't give explanation of why we are getting really what we are getting. So we have an extended uh, Kitayev model in one dimension. We are still de dealing with one dimensional model. We have hopping and uh, next nearest neighbor hopping and next nearest neighbor hopping. We have uh, nearest neighbor pairing and next nearest neighbor pairing. And we have a chemical potential term. So R, M or tuning parameters is a multidimensional space over here. I can scale it by T1 to get four. And these are the... Uh, uh, parameters that I'm going to use in the theory. This model has been studied by uh, these people earlier in the context of having multiple Majorana modes. So we can uh, find out the phase diagram of the, we can do solve this problem exactly and find out the phase diagram. And for fix t and lambda 2, what we find in the lambda g uh, parameter space, uh, you can find that uh, there are critical points in this phase at uh, uh, g is equal to 1.9. This uh, is you get from the gap closing at k0 equal to pi. And this is a critical line that you get from the gap closing at k0 equal to 0. And then you also get 
some gap closing at uh, non high symmetry points. And we can also get the uh, uh, turn numbers in all these uh, cases. You get turn number of 0, uh, whatever, winding numbers of 0 here, winding number of minus 1, minus 2, 0, 1, and so on. So the winding number changes by 1 across the, these cases, and the winding number changes by 2 across when you go across the non isometry point. And we can write down in this case the renormalization group equations that we get. Uh, we write down the renormalization group equations around the two high symmetry points, which is k0 equal to 0 and k0 equal to pi. So for k0 equal to 0 is the upper signs, for k0 equal to pi is the lower signs. And our aim is to see whether how much of this we can get by using RG equation. This is an exact solution. So from the RG equation, so we want to write down the RG equations and we want to look at the flows, how the parameters flow in the theory. What we find, this is the flow diagram of at the high symmetry point K0 equal to 0, this, which is the RG equation derived. What we find is that the, you, you find that the flows are, uh, uh, you, can get a, you can get this uh, critical line. And you can also get the, uh, 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 this part of the, uh, some part of this curve, it turns out to be unstable fixed point. Because you can see that at this point, the dire uh, flow directions are away, right? The remaining part of the curve is a stable fixed point, right? Where the uh, curve lines are going towards. So what is important in this theory is that you're getting this part as your unstable, as your critical line. Where the, where the uh, low part diverges, and they're also getting the unstable fixed point over here. Right? So the red dashed line and part of the mauve line denoting unstable fixed points signify critical lines because across that you expect a phase transition. Similarly, if I do the flow diagram at the high symmetry point k0 is equal to pi. I get uh, the one, uh, the brown dashed line, and then I get also this kind of a curve, of which this part of the curve, from here to here, is uh, unstable. The surprise that we had is that it has a surprising overlap with the exact solution. Uh, part of this curve matches with the exact solution, and part of this curve matches with the exact solution. And also, we can understand the fact that there is a, there'll be, uh, that the, these uh, and this have the ring divergence scenario. So uh, you can see that there, there, there should be a spin, the flip of, there's a two flips of sign at the topological phase transition. So one can guess that this phase transition and this phase transition should have uh, turn number changes of two. Whereas across these lines, the churn number changes would be one. So our surprise was that although we had not done any kind of RG equation at the non isometry fixed point, we're still getting most of it. It's not exact. Even if we change parameters in the theory, what we find is sometimes this ring becomes larger, sometimes this ring uh, becomes smaller. But by and large, most of the non isometry fixed point gets covered by this. Uh, renormalization group process. So that, that is the main thing that we, we have to still explain as to completely why it's happening, which we're not very clear about. We also uh, uh, have this, uh, we, we were look, looked at the point where the, the tri, uh, these kinds of points where three phases meet at a point, C is zero, C is minus one, and C is one. And precisely at this point, the curvature function, the if you write down the uh, RG equation, it turns out to be indeterminate. Not that the curvature function, the RG equations are indeterminate. And so we expect the criticality at this point should be different from, because it's a tricritical kind of a point. And we, we have some kind of uh, uh, pictures of what it looks like. If you look at how the uh, phase transition is approached along this line, you can you get the whichever way the, we turn. You can see that it's path independent and it it diverges whichever way we come towards this point. 
Whereas if you try to look at it to the to a close to critical point, what you see is that uh, at the critical point, uh, the value of the curvature function turns out to be some particular number which you can calculate explicitly. And of course, it does not diverge at that point, at the tricritical point. And this is the, uh, the way you find it from the trivial side. And if you look at it from the non-trivial side, we again get that the value turns out to be the same. And uh, because it, we are close to the, these points, which are, uh, these are the points which will diverge when you go approach this line, because it's a kind of a ring divergence scenario. So the universal features is that for critical point as expected, the function diverges as you approach the critical line and is path independent. For the tricritical point, function does not diverge as we approach the critical point. In fact, approaches a path independent peak value, which we can be obtained from the equation. We can compute the critical exponents, at least for the standard case, but not the tricritical point. It turns out that uh, you can uh, just see, put the values of k0 and pi and see what happens. And you find that uh, nu is equal to 1 and nu is equal to gamma, as you might expect. Both of them diverge with the exponent of 1. And since it's in one dimension, you would expect them to be the same. And then the uh, last point I want to mention uh, is that uh, one can compute the correlation function as a Fourier transform of the curvature function, as I said. So uh, all, though the model does have divergences at non-high symmetry point, I'm, we are using the fa fact that the divergences at the high symmetry point seem to capture all the phase transitions. So we choose to fit the curvature function to Lorentzians at the high symmetry point, k0 and k0 is plus minus pi, and complete lambda r. So we can actually find out what is lambda r. You find as a function of this zeta pi and zeta 0. The two high symmetry, the two uh, correlation lengths that we introduced, and uh, you find that. Uh, so, you, what you find is that there is some oscillatory term over here, and this is a non-oscillatory term. And uh, so, essentially, you can show that when uh, the, when you go close to the phase transitions, the uh, in if you if you take the parameters such that you're close to the uh, zeta 0, that is a divergence at k is equal to 0, then the, uh, the envelope of the wave functions has a very long decay length, but the oscillations themselves die out quickly. On the other hand, if you look at the uh, uh, point which is close to k0 equal to pi, then the envelope falls off quickly. This is a confused plot. We don't have a better plot at the moment. Uh, but the oscillations continue there for a long time. So essentially, some uh, uh, formula such as this seems to work well for the full F. So that's all I have to say. We expect this te technique in the long run to be useful to characterize topological phase transitions in multidimensional parameter spaces. Particularly if you can also do it in cases where you have interactions and in periodically driven systems. It could be numerically efficient because phase space is so large and you don't need to compute in all case spaces but only at nearby points because you can use a renormalization group equation. I would say that this is still in the exploratory phase and one needs to understand more about the method but it seems to have some promise. That's it. You, uh, is it clear that you'll get the same scaling exponents when you uh, approach uh, the uh, gap closing point from one direction or from the other direction? Yeah, it is. Uh, at the high symmetry points, k0 is equal to 0 and pi, at least in all the models that we have, you're getting the same critical exponents when you're 
approaching it from the either of the missing. I'm not so sure of the non-high symmetry points, but we haven't computed it yet. So, uh, so in your uh, are these flows, huh? the fixed points. What were the fixed points? Were they again yeah. some simple limits of the parameter yeah. space? Yeah, at the fixed points, the essential idea is that you are going to uh, the curvature gets reduced, right? So, uh, in the models that one considers, it, they become simplified. You can calculate the churn invariance at that those churn invariance or uh, topological invariance at those points easily. Similar to the SSH uh, case. Hmm? Similar to the SSH case, uh, case. Similar to the SSH case. Even in our case or in other cases, what you find is that it just becomes uh, most of the parameters, some of the parameters go to zero and so on, so that it becomes easy. Other than that, whether the fixed point by itself has a, a significance, I don't know. But is there, an, is there a necessity that the eigen levels will be flat at the fixed points, or is no, that, no. that's It'll not a necessity? No, no. Completely flat only for. Uh, uh, for the topologically trivial case. In the topologically non-trivial case, they will have some Special. places where you should get those non-trivial answers, right? So you said that uh, in the, the, this has been applied to interacting systems as well, weakly interacting systems. Yeah. So how do they define their curvature there? Uh, they still have a mo momentum. Yes. And. Uh, I think what they've done is that they've just taken it, in a, they've done perturbation theory and have uh, some uh, perturbative inclusion of the uh, extra terms in the F. Okay. They've added F and some extra terms to the So if you try to generalize this to three-dimensional time reversal invariant topological phase, what would be an equivalent of a curvature function? To? Yeah, what will be the... Curvature function. Or curvature a function for yeah. a three dimensional yeah. time reversal. Yeah. Will it be the time reversal polarize, polarization? Yeah, you need something which you integrate to give you the churn invariant. So they've done, or I mean, I've only seen cases where there is some kind of this thing that you can. I don't know. If, the, if you don't have something like if in some of these higher order topological insulators, you don't have something where you can easily integrate it to get the term better, whether it can be generalized. They may be, they've been, but one will have to think of how to do it. It's not as straightforward. Any more questions? Not let's thank Professor Sumit. <laughs>